Okay, Matthew, thank you very much for joining us today for this interview. Um, for those of us watching, can you please give us a little bit of background? Um, who are you and what do you do for a living? Well, my name is uh, yeah, Matt Ryder. So I've been out in Dubai um, for 13 years now, working as a, a full-time professional artist out here for about eight years. Um, yeah, so I'm predominantly a landscape painter. Um, I'm also a teacher, I, so I run workshops and um, classes in my Dubai studio. Um, but yeah, predominantly what I'm doing is actually painting the, the landscapes of the UAE. Is this your um, I, studio set up in the background? Yes, yeah, just I'm in my studio, so I'm, wow. there's my painting area, and then this is where I dry all my paintings behind me. So yep. uh, yeah, I thought it'd be kind of better to have it pointing that way in the corner. <laughs> <I figure. laughs> um, so what is a usual day like for a professional artist? As a standard practice, I do try and basically get to the studio by about half eight, nine o'clock, um, do all my admin stuff, which is catching up on my emails, uh, reply to clients, um, galleries, and then I will pretty much solidly paint from um, around kind of half 10 uh, through to around four o'clock, clean up the studio and then, then head home. Um, so I, I'm lucky, uh, especially this time of year, um, I get to spend a lot of time actually at the easel painting. Um, during the winter, I, I'm spending a lot of time actually traveling around, going out to the deserts and this sort of thing. So um, on average, I'd spend maybe one or two days a week actually outside of the studio, scouting new locations and doing small studies. And then the rest of the time will be, will be here. For, for those people who may be watching, who maybe are a little bit uncertain how a professional artist makes their living. How do you make your living? So the, working towards shows is, is actually not, um, it's not that profitable. Uh, of course, when it gets to the show and work selling, um, then you know that's when you get an income from that particular work. Um, during the rest of the year, um, I, I work on small studies, which I, I do studio sales uh, once every few months. Um, and then I rely quite heavily on commission work. So I work with uh, interior design companies, um people who are um specifically looking for artists to work on projects for them and um, so for example i i did a, a project with jamira uh, the jamira group i did like 30 paintings for for them and working with like interior design firms is really helpful for for bringing in uh, bringing in that business um other than that i i do some illustration work uh, some freelance illustration work a long time ago, I started a, actually a caricature business, which was, that's how I started off as, as an artist here. I would go out to events and do live digital caricature and live traditional caricature. Um, and occasionally when it's very quiet, I still take on those events. Um, so I go out and actually work at events. Uh, but the majority of my income now is from selling paintings and, and commission work. You worked for a number of years um, within the recruitment in industry, didn't you? Before kind of returning? I did, yeah. Was it difficult transitioning from what a lot of people would say is like a traditional job into um, caricature and illustration? I, um, I, was, I was lucky because I had a fairly smooth transition. I, I was already doing um, a little bit of work uh, on the caricature side, like doing some commissions uh, while I was still um, gainfully employed. And when I actually, when I set up the business, it was during the recession, the first recession. Um, so it was basically like a, a forced decision to make, but I was lucky because I'd, I'd actually built up the business while I was still working. So it was kind of 50, 50 on where my income was coming from. Um, so it literally just kind of, the scales tipped when I was made redundant, I was kind of fully committed to uh, setting up the character business. So I got my trade license sorted um, and, I was also then able to advertise what I was doing. And um, so once I actually got to the point where I was able to advertise and put all of my efforts into it, instead of feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm not hundred percent committed to this, the business took off uh, pretty quickly. And it was also a time when there were events happening here all the time. Um, so it was, it was just good timing. I think on my part, it did obviously go from having a, a stable, decent income to purely relying on what my business was doing. Um, but it wasn't as as big a drop as what some might have had because I'd already done some of the groundwork before taking the leap. So how do you determine how much a piece of your work is worth? Like I have my I have my set prices now, but that has built over time. 
So when I first started um, selling paintings, I knew roughly what I wanted to, to sell my paintings for. But ultimately, if nobody is buying the paintings, then there's a problem. So if, if I was confident, so this is a situation I find myself in. So it's like I was confident that the work I was producing was of a, of a good quality, not of the highest quality because I was starting out, but it was a good enough quality to sell. And yet it wasn't selling. So it was like, do I need to lower my prices? Do I need to put my prices up? Like, what's the situation here? And um, so I found a price point um, where I sold a couple of pieces um, and I was like, okay. And that was for a, a certain size. It was relatively small. And so that became my starting point for my pricing. As I sold more and more work, I was able to slowly put my prices up. And then also what really helped me with pricing some of the larger pieces was um, working with these interior design firms. They were letting me know what the budgets were. Um, so once I found out what the budgets were, I could see then if they fit with what I thought my, my pricing, if it was correct, um, and everything kind of fit together, which I guess was lucky. Um, but that's, that's ultimately how I find my price point. The other way that you can do it is price it by size. So you, you figure out, so your standard size that you're working, say you work on average uh, 12 by 16 inch canvas, have a set price for that and then work it out literally inch by inch. So you're pricing for the size of the canvas. So when it goes up, you literally add on whatever that price per inch is to get to the bigger, the bigger sizes. Once you've actually decided on your, your price point, you can really do stick to it. I'm contacted probably two or three times a week by people who want me to do something for exposure or you know they just want me to draw their dog because they think that I... I just draw things for fun. You know, it's, <laughs> I'd love to draw your dog, but you've got to pay me for it. You know, this is, this is my business. This is what I do. And there's this, there's a definite um, uh, law, I guess, to like, if you're contacted by a magazine or, or a collector, a potential collector, and um, to get something for free up front, um, it's just a terrible slippery slope. So it's, it's something that, you learn over time. You find yourself in a position in the beginning then when you were approached by companies asking you to work for exposure. Did you find yourself in a position where you had to make a decision about accepting that work or, or from the beginning were you very much of the opinion that of no, it doesn't matter, I'm not, I'm not taking it? When I started off, I was very much um, torn on whether I should be doing that or not. Um, and, you know, in my, in my shame, I, I did take on a couple of those projects. Um, I had a very big um, magazine contact me uh, and they wanted a, a spot illustration, a portrait, um, full page to go into the magazine, which, you know, that's, that's a big job. And it was, a, it was a very well-known magazine. Um, and they're like, no, can you, can you do this one for us? And they shouldn't have been asking because, you know, it's a big magazine, they have budgets. Um, but I did, I took on the job thinking this will lead ultimately to, to more illustration work. And yes, I, I took on a couple of jobs from it, but you know, the, the feeling of, of being done out of, of, a, of a, an income on that stuck with me for so long after doing it, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't work with them again. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely something I've been through, but now the temptation isn't there because I, I value the work in a certain way. Um, and I know it's worth what I'm selling the paintings for. So, yeah. Which of your kind of social media um, websites do you tend to find gives you the most exposure? Because I know you have a few. So Instagram is absolutely the best for me. I mean, it's a visual platform for a start. Um, it's just, it has the, the highest engagement level. Um, I have more of a following on, on my Facebook page, but it's, it's not very active. Oh, as in, um, I'm active on it in the same way that I am in Instagram, but there's not as much engagement with the posts. But definitely Instagram is, is by far the most effective. Twitter, I don't really use at all. LinkedIn, once I got out of recruitment, <laughs> I basically stopped using. Um, I update it probably once a year. So. Do you tend to find any of your, like your clientele and your business comes through social media like Instagram? My work has been found through, um, through Instagram. 
um, and I've taken commissions and made sales through directly through Instagram as well, um, which is great because you know it's it comes out of nothing really. You know, it's just thin air, and then suddenly um, somebody is well, I've, I've seen your work. I'm really interested in, in either buying this piece which you posted um, some time ago, or we're interested in commissioning something for a project. And um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would struggle um, without social media now to get my work out there anywhere near as much as, as what it is so and even with the workshops and stuff like i said even though i have a good mail list now and a, a good client base um i still end up filling the majority of workshops that i do through through social media so yeah it's um yeah it's it's an absolute necessity to my business for sure working then as a professional artist what difficulties do you tend to face which might be unique to the profession that you are in as opposed to kind of the difficulties that you'd face in an office job or as a teacher or as a doctor? Well, I think it's, it's the same as, a, as being any kind of freelancer or working for yourself. I mean, there's no, there's obviously no guaranteed income for me um, ever. You know, it's like I, I have good months, I have bad months. Financial planning is, is obviously, it's a big issue, <laughs> but you know, thankfully, as I um, become more and more established, that becomes less of less of an issue. Um, I don't know. I mean, having the ability to adapt to, to these things, I think, is is really important. Certainly, the hardest the hardest thing is is really yeah. I mean, just trying to plan financially without having a a, a guaranteed income, especially when you have a family. Um, but yeah, it's it it, it has its um it has its benefits as well of course you know i have so much freedom and um you know if i if i want to paint flowers one day i can just go and paint some flowers and if i want to go and paint mountains i can go and paint the mountains it's you know i have this real luxury of being able to 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 do what i i love for a living um but yeah always in the back of your mind you're, you're concerned about money of course you know yeah no i, I like i didn't other than working in an office in, in recruitment for a few years, like I, I hadn't um, got any experience in sales or um, marketing. It's just something that I've had to learn as I've gone along. So I've learned accounting, you know, by working for myself, I've learned all about marketing, branding, you know, all these things, which I had no idea about at all and didn't realize were anywhere near as important as what they, what they are. And, um, you know, even like branding, uh, I, had no idea that would be important as as an artist, but you know when you when you're trying to sell yourself as a product, which is effectively what I'm doing, I'm selling paintings, but they're my paintings, so I'm selling myself, and um, you have to stick to your brand. So you know it's working out what that's going to be and moving forward with that has been yeah that's been a real learning curve, but it's something that I'm completely self-taught in. As with painting, really, it's like, I've, yeah, just kind of fig figuring it out as we go. In closing, do you think there's any advice that you'd want to pass on to people who aspire to become professional artists in their own right? Uh, the main thing I think we've, we've pretty much covered is just, um, is just to keep your professionalism and treat it like it's a, a career and not a hobby. You know, if you, if you want to do this professionally, um, if you want to come out of university and be an artist, you have got to act like a professional. So if you come out and act like an artist, dare I say it, you know, stay out partying all night and then, you know, never get any work done, get up at four in, in the afternoon and, you know, you, people aren't going to take you seriously. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I mean, I've, I keep my business hours. I do. I keep my accounts. I have a license. You know, everything is in place to make sure that all I have to worry about is actually producing good work. So, yeah, I, I think that's important. Also, keep in mind um, things like branding and marketing. You know, just obviously we're in a world of social media now. So, like, I, I do think it's really important to, if you're going to be a professional artist, have a professional Instagram and a professional Facebook. Don't post pictures of your... Uh, drunken nights out or partying with your, your whatever you know yeah. keep everything separate so have your personal one but have your professional one have a good solid website you know have everything like i said have everything in place 
it just means that all you have to do is focus on whatever your vision is for what you want to paint and what you want to produce and then just get on with actually producing it um, and then everything else will kind of take care of itself in theory <laughs> <laughs> okay Matthew well, thank you very much for your time I'm sure a lot of people will be very interested in hearing the experiences you've had and using that to help inspire um, them to as you said to come up as well so thank you very much for your time Oh, thank you. It was nice to chat to you. Thank you again to Matthew Ryder for joining us and speaking to us about the life of a professional artist. If you want to see more of Matthew's work, you can check out his personal website, his Instagram and his Facebook page. He also has an Instagram and a Facebook for his caricature and illustration company, which I think you'll find really interesting. On there, you can find information about how to get in contact with him, the workshops that he runs, blog as well as all of his work and any upcoming shows that he has. Thank you again to Matthew and I'll see you next time.